The date was February 25th, 1996, when 55-year-old political activist Dr. Hang S. Noor's body was found in his car near his Los Angeles home in Chinatown. LAPD later ruled the cause of death homicide as a result of a gang-related incident. My name is Riley, and this is Conspiracy Central. Our question. Was the murder of Hang S. Noor actually an act of random gang violence? Or was it the silencing of a prolific public figure and activist turned Oscar winning actor? If his name doesn't ring any bells, let's get you caught up. Hang S. Noor was many things. A doctor, an actor, a husband, and a prominent figure in the fight against the communist regime, specifically the Khmer Rouge in Cambodia. Noor's largest claim to fame is his Oscar winning performance as Dirth Pran in the 1984 film, The Killing Fields, depicting the gruesome treatment of the Cambodian people during the reign of Pol Pot. With a total of 12 movies under his belt and a rapidly growing following, Dr. Hang S. Noor was easily becoming one of the most prolific speakers against the atrocities of the Khmer Rouge. Established in Cambodia in 1967 and originally called the Armed Wing of the Communist Party of Kampuchea, or CPK for short, the Khmer Rouge took power over Cambodia through guerrilla war from 1975 to 1979. April 17, 1975, the leader of the Khmer Rouge, Pol Pot, implemented the Year Zero experiment, expelling two million people from the capital, Phnom Penh, and other major cities around the country, forcing them into labor camps in the Cambodian countryside. The term Year Zero was coined to mark a hard reset of Cambodian society and count the preceding years as irrelevant since they would be purged and replaced in the years to come. Pol Pot's goal was to create an agrarian utopia with a classless society by turning every citizen to agricultural workers, swiftly cutting off anyone he saw as corrupted by Western capitalist ideals. This included anyone with an education, religious beliefs, and or knowledge prior to the beginning of Year Zero. One of the people who was dispelled from the capital during this time was our own Dr. Hang S. Noor, who survived by doing the unthinkable, hiding his skills as a doctor, his education, and even his glasses. In order to survive, Dr. Noor stripped himself of his title, his profession, and his experience, faking his way through his time with the regime as an illiterate taxi driver. In 1975, Noor and his wife, Chiang Mai Hoi, were spared execution by firing squad, only to suffer what some would later consider a worse fate, the re-education camps. The very camps that share the title of Nora's debut film, The Killing Fields. Bill Hewitt, a writer for People Weekly, wrote that after entering the camps, Nor quote, smashed rocks from dawn to midnight and was made to wear a yoke to plow the earth like an ox. June 2nd, 1978, at age 28, Chiang Mai Hoi, Hang S. Nora's wife, prematurely went into labor. Suffering in agony without medication, food, or assistance, Nor could only hold his pregnant wife as she and his unborn child died in his arms. It's believed that a caesarean section could have saved her and spared him grief, but without his tools as a physician, he could not operate. Even if he had been able to, it would have been at the risk of exposing his true identity as a doctor, which would have led to him and his family's execution. On December 25th, 1978, 150,000 Vietnamese troops invaded Democratic Kampuchea, overrunning the Kampuchean Revolutionary Army and pushing the Khmer Rouge out of power in Cambodia, therefore ending the rule of Pol Pot, but not the influence of the Khmer Rouge. Dr. Hang Noor, however, did until May 1979. Escaping with his young niece, he took a position as a physician in a refugee camp in Thailand until 1980, when he was finally accepted into the United States. Because his license and credentials as a physician in Cambodia were not recognized within the US, he was unable to pick up where he left off and had to begin anew in this foreign country. Eventually settling in Los Angeles with his niece, Nor took up a job as a security guard and eventually a job counselor with a focus on political refugees, many of whom, like himself, were from Cambodia. As Nor was trying to settle into his new home, war raged on in Cambodia. The Khmer Rouge and Pol Pot although pushed out of power, had merely receded into the jungle. With the aid of China, they continued to wage guerrilla war on the Vietnamese puppet government that had taken their place. In 1982, Pol Pot had created a fragile coalition with two non-communist Khmer groups that also opposed the Vietnamese central government. Although the Khmer Rouge was the strongest of the three parties in the group, their leader was someone other than Pol Pot. His name, Norodom Sihanouk. Norodom Sihanouk was once the leader of Cambodia and a neutralist party head during the Vietnam War in the 1960s. He remained in charge until 1970 when a United States-supported coup led by General Lon Nol 
who removed him from office and country. Upon his return to Cambodia in 1975, he was placed under house arrest until January 1979. Norodom Sihanouk denounced the Vietnamese invasion and took control of the uneasy coalition government in exile. The Khmer Rouge, specifically Pol Pot, used him as an advocate during talks with the United Nations due to the fact that the regime in Cambodia was losing their battle with Vietnamese military forces. During this time, Hang S. Noor had established himself in Los Angeles' Chinatown as a leader in the refugee community. According to his friends and family, he was happy to be there. Then, in the early 1980s, a casting call was sent out looking for actors to perform in the feature film, The Killing Fields. Despite having zero acting experience, Hang Noor received the role in the film, unaware of his importance until production began, in Thailand. He had become Dith Pran, a Cambodian photojournalist who was captured while assisting New York Times reporter, Sidney Shanberg, escaping the country and in turn, the Khmer Rouge. Fast forward to November 2nd, 1984, the movie was released in New York, New York, and not even six months later, on March 25th, 1985, he won the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor in the very same film, thrusting Hang S. Noor into the limelight. Hang soon started to participate in interviews, give speeches, and speak of the atrocities committed by the Khmer Rouge. In an ABC exclusive segment, Hang S. Noor recounts his own trials, as well as elaborates on the story of Dith Pran, in the segment, Dith and Hang revisit Cambodia with the ABC News crew. When they return, Hang and Dith sit together in the crowd to answer a few lingering questions the reporter had about their time going back to Cambodia. Most notably in the program, Dith called for a Nuremberg trial against the Khmer Rouge to hold its leaders accountable for the massacre of the two million people in Cambodia during their reign. For those who do not know, the Nuremberg trials were trials held in Germany from 1945 to 1949 for the purpose of bringing war crimes to justice. In many, if not all, of the interviews with Dr. Noor, he describes the horrors of being captured by the Khmer Rouge, his own telling of the story becoming just as prolific, if not more so, than that of the character he played in The Killing Fields. Hang seemingly overnight had cast a spotlight on the Cambodian people and the monstrosity of a government they had been forced to survive. Cambodia continued to wage war with itself through September 1989, when the Vietnamese decided to withdraw, the war had spread all through the countryside near the border. Vietnamese casualties were reported to number 30,000 upon their final withdrawal. All of this and the Khmer Rouge had yet to be dealt with. In 1991, Norodom Sihanouk had once again become the leader of Cambodia. He was the head of the Supreme National Council, the interim administrative body until 1993. In 1987, Noor partnered with the journalist Roger Warner to write the book A Cambodian Odyssey. It gained critical acclaim around the world, exposing Pol Pot and shedding a finer light on the tragedy that is Hang S. Noor's life. Noor went even further to use his newfound fame and riches to support the refugees of Cambodia, founding the Hang S. Noor Foundation in 1991. He continued to raise awareness of the atrocities continuing in Cambodia. Pol Pot's forces and the Khmer Rouge still posed a great threat to the Cambodian people, and Noor never missed a chance to publicly condemn their actions. He did so knowing full well that he was sticking his neck out farther and farther, starting a school and opening a sawmill in Cambodia. September 1993. And Nordam Sihanouk, through United Nations-sponsored elections that re-established the monarchy, once again became king of Cambodia. He maintained his title until October 2004, when he abdicated the throne to his son, Norodom Siamoni. Although out of power, Pol Pot remained a serious threat in Cambodia and around the world. His reach was unknown, and with the growing Cambodian population in America, it was almost impossible to tell if, when, or how his influence would rear its head. Despite this, Hang continued to push the limits, fighting his very public battle against the Khmer Rouge. At the time, it was impossible to tell if Khmer Rouge had access to information in the LAPD or the gangs in Los Angeles, but after his death, the crime was regarded as a random act of gang violence. Three Asian teens reported to be members of a local gang called the Oriental Lazy Boys were arrested two months later and charged with murdering Dr. Noor. Tak Sun Tan, Jason Chan, and Indra Lim all served time for murder in the first degree, as well as criminal robbery. From the very beginning of the trials, it was strange. For the first time in Los Angeles County, and the second time in California, three separate juries would simultaneously weigh evidence on the same crime. During each trial, the evidence was circumstantial at best. Witness accounts could not place any of the suspects at the scene of the crime. Multiple witness accounts did, however, mention a car pulling up and speeding off after the shots were fired. 
which is even more strange since the night the three teens were accused of being near the area, not one of them possessed a vehicle and all three were on foot. Most of the witness accounts were retracted during the trial, which is common for gang-related crime for fear of retaliation by other members of the group. And because of this, the jury was forced to make their decision without their testimony. Even though this is true, facts in the case still didn't seem to add up. The LAPD claims that the only items missing in the robbery were Dr. Noor's $6,000 Rolex and his necklace with a pendant containing a picture of his late wife, Hoy. The prosecution, Deputy District Attorney Craig Hum, claimed the three boys had been high on and stole the watch to buy more drugs, killing Hang Esnor after he refused to part with the necklace because of its sentimental value. Stranger still, if the boys were in fact looking to score big for their next fix, how come the rest of the valuables Hang had possessed in the car were untouched? In Dr. Noor's jacket pocket alone was upwards of $2,000, and in his back seat was at least another $500. If these teens had actually been looking for cash, would that amount not tide them over? Why would they leave it untouched? And what was the point in killing Hang Noor? In court, he got away with calling the defendants gangsters and thugs. He even went so far as to stack the jury to get his conviction, making sure none of the jurors would see past the facade he had built. Even Jason Chan's attorney, Ivan Klein, stated, there was a laundry list of judicial errors. Our story doesn't end here. In 2009, tribunals were held by the UN and the Cambodian government in recognition of the atrocities of the Khmer Rouge. The plan was to bring the leaders of Pol Pot's regime to justice. One of the men on trial, Kang Kek Lu, a former head of Killing Field Prison, where 14,000 people were executed, made stunning allegations. November, the same year, he stated, Hang Noor was killed because he appeared in the film The Killing Fields, and they wished to kill me and my wife in order to shut us up. He continued his statement, describing the way Pol Pot had called forth the hit on Noor, referencing a similar assassination tactic used by Stalin to kill Leon Trotsky in Mexico. Although his statement was recorded by the UN in trial and reviewed by the United States government, Law enforcement stated that the source was not credible and pursued no further investigation into his claim. Why didn't the police look deeper into Hang Esnor's assassination? If it was a robbery gone wrong, how do you explain all the money left behind in Noor's Mercedes? Did the Oriental Lazy Boys gang actually kill Hang? Or were they just in the wrong place at the wrong time? Did the Khmer Rouge's invisible hand stretch all the way through to the United States? All questions left by the strange circumstances surrounding the death of an incredible actor, doctor, and activist Hang S. Noor. We'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Thank you for watching. This is Conspiracy Central.